So many of you who are now exploring Vedic astrology in more detail, uh, going beyond uh, the standard cookbook approach, you've probably become aware of the idea of Varga charts, divisional charts. And you're probably already peripherally aware of these things. Uh, Varga charts are a very detailed and complex system within astrology that allow us to uh, see the difference between twins born minutes apart, or any individual really born minutes apart in the same location, because as time moves on, we know that the ascendant changes, the ascendant degree changes. And we know that in astrology, the idea of the sun sign has been made popular. And that is what, what sign was the sun in the moment you were born. But really, everyone within the same month is going to have that same sun sign. So in Indian astrology or Vedic astrology, oftentimes we use the moon sign as well, which changes every two and a quarter days. So that's even more specific to you, uh, towards your jiva, your soul, your individualized aspect of this consciousness, this divine consciousness. And then we go a little bit deeper into the ascendant, which changes every two hours. And the ascendant is going to be a particular sign. For example, if Leo was rising the moment you were born, well, then Leo becomes your ascendant. And typically, depending on when and where you were born, that will change within a two-hour window. But what do we do when we have people born very close together in time? They're still Leo ascendants. All their planets are still going to be pretty much in the same spot. But what makes the difference? Well, each degree of every sign, each degree of every sign um, can be related specifically to another area of life, and that area of life being defined by, uh, in a sense, a different zodiacal energy. And what do I mean by that? Well, think about it this way. If we take someone's chart, and let's say that they were born with their ascendant at three degrees of Aries. Now, the time it takes for that ascendant to change from three degrees uh, to say three and a half degrees uh, of Aries, that's going to shift the ascendant of their Navamsha chart from Aries to Taurus. Now, the time it takes for that shift to occur is not very long. And that's just talking about one Varga chart, one divisional chart, the Navamsha, the D9, the one that most people are aware of. We have at least 16 divisional charts that we want to look at, and they are all set up with their own patterns of um, when a planet is in this particular degree of a sign, then it's going to be in this sign in the Desumsha, and the Navamsha, and the Drekana, and so on. So the degrees of each sign, they are not just space where five degrees of Aries is the same as nine degrees of Aries. It's not like that. And we learned this during the apprenticeship course uh, that we've been doing this year, uh, the very first course we did on the Rashis and Signs class, where we essentially focused on the signs not just what does it mean to have Aries as your ascendant? What does it mean to have um, Capricorn as your 11th house? Not, not that. What we did is we dug into, number one, what are the general qualities of the sign? But we took it even further to look at how the signs actually create the Vargas. So oftentimes when we think about Vargas or divisional charts, we see them as separate charts and we look at the more uh, possibly house-based first, second, third, fourth, fifth house, and so on. But really what creates the Vargas are not the houses themselves, but the signs of the zodiac, the signs of the zodiac. And this is where it gets really fascinating, if you can get a detailed understanding of Vargas, because now, not only can you see the difference between charts of people born within minutes apart, but now you have some profound insight, or can have some profound insight, into transits in a way that most people don't. A lot of people say things like, well, when you get a planet transiting very near a natal planet, let's say you have your natal moon in Aquarius. And so astrologers would focus on, well, whenever, um, whenever Saturn 
gets within a certain degree or a certain orb of that moon, you really want to feel the power of that transit of Saturn to the moon, more so than at other times. But we can, we can break it down now even more so by understanding that the orb or the degree in which we're looking at where we're going to have the most impact, maybe, for example, that will occur when Saturn enters the same Navamsha as the moon. Okay, so again, referring back here, and what I'm referring to, um, this is in the Art and Science of Vedic Astrology, Volume 1. And within this book, there are tables that allow you to know when a planet is in this degree of this sign in your birth chart, it will be in this sign within the particular Varga in question. So look at the Navamsha table. Let's say that we have the moon um, at 10 degrees. Let's say we have the moon at 10 degrees of Taurus. 10 degrees of Taurus. Now, what that means is, is that from 10 degrees to 1320 of Taurus, that moon will be in the Navamsha of Aries. All right, and I'm going to give some more description on how we can figure this out, how we can see this. But knowing that, now let's say we're taking some transits and we're seeing that the, the planet Saturn is getting close to this 10 degrees. Well, it's when Saturn hits that same Navamsha, that same pattern of 10 degrees to 13 degrees 20 um, of Taurus, that at that same time, by transit, Saturn will be impacting the same Navamsha that the moon is in. So the most important impact of Saturn within the same sign as the moon is probably going to occur um, while it's in the same Navamsha. So hopefully I'll be able to pull up some examples to show this. Um, and I bring this up because the idea of Vargas is very important just as general chart calculation, period. But where it really excels is also getting more specific with uh, transits. All right, so we might do a whole separate video on this, although I am planning on doing a weekend-long webinar um, on the Vargas uh, this October. So if you have an interest in that, email me. I haven't written it all up yet, but it's on my agenda. Um, and I'm going to offer it to the apprenticeship course students first. Uh, so you know about it now. And if there's room, you know, please don't hesitate to ask and we can sign you up. It'll be a live webinar that we'll do um, so you can attend from anywhere as long as you have a computer. But anyway, let's rewind a little bit. So what, what are the Vargas when we look at a Varga? When we have the sun in a particular degree in a person's natal chart, 15 degrees of Leo. Well, that sun is at 15 degrees of Leo and just by the very nature that's at 15 degrees of Leo, it's going to be in a particular position in the Hora, a particular position in the Drekana, uh, in the Saptamsha, the Navamsha, the Dasamsha, the Dwadasamsha, the Trimsamsha, and so on, however many Vargas we want to go through. So that means that whenever a planet is at a particular degree, it's not just um, in Leo. By being in that particular degree, it defines or helps to define all these other areas of life as well in relationship to how the sun is related to those areas of life. Right, so hopefully I'm explaining this clearly. And let me give you some examples. So again, in the Art and Science of Vedic Astrology, Volume 1, uh, there's a chart that describes, tells you what each Varga is about. So for example, the Rashi, or the, the horoscope, the main birth chart. Um, this is what everyone looks at mainly. When you get your chart calculated, they're talking about the Rashi, the horoscope, the natal chart, which is considered to be the first Varga, Varga 1, the first divisional chart. From there, this is the fundamental path a person is on. It's going to show the experiences one gets involved with, the things that occur, how they feel about different areas of life. It's going to be the real concrete things uh, that you see a person going through. We have the Hora, or the second harmonic chart which deals with wealth, 
and even masculine and feminine tendencies. So if I'm looking at a person's birth chart and I want to know about wealth, well, yes, I want to look at their second house, their 11th house, and so on. But if I want to dial it in, I also have to take into consideration their hora. The drekina, the third divisional chart, uh, deals with vitality, siblings, the ability to take initiative, courage, to go on adventures, things of this nature. How skillfully we use a particular planet. So how planets are situated within the drekina help us see um, how they will impact uh, our capacity to relate to siblings, to take initiative, uh, our vitality, and so on. The Chattertamsha is the fourth divisional chart. It deals with well-being, happiness, emotions. Also, it's related to property. So, if I'm looking at a person's horoscope, their main Rashi chart, their D1, I'm going to look at their fourth house, I'm going to look at Mars, I'm going to look at the Lord of the Fourth to get a sense of what is property like for them, what is their sense of emotional contentment like for them. But then, to further refine it, I'm going to pull out the Chattertamsha to compare and see where is their overlap, where is their confluence. So we'll do this with all of the Vargas. Saptamsha for children, creativity, sexuality, dating, the Navamsha, spouse, partnerships, purpose, long-term committed relationships, the Dasamsha, the D10, our power, position, livelihood, and status within the world. People often relate it to career. Uh, the Dwadasamsha, related to past life uh, influences, hereditary influences, parental influences. So oftentimes we use the Dwada Samsha when it comes to um, hereditary uh, health issues or hereditary mental emotional issues. If I see it in the Dwada Samsha and someone comes and asks me, am I going to be prone to this? Um, well, we can see if it's carried over by looking at the Dwada Samsha. The Shodamsha, which deals with conveyances, vehicles, um, also our capacity for joy. The Vimsamsha, spiritual progress, capacity for devotion and religion. Someone asked me a question about that, that's the Varga chart I pull up. The Siddhamsha, for higher education, spiritual knowledge, relationship to gurus, relationships to spiritual teachers. The Bamsha, the D27, general strengths and weaknesses. The Trimsamsha, dangers, misfortunes, health problems, enmity. It's also used to compare, um, to see what kind of confluences we have supported in the Trimsamsha to the regular birth chart. So all these things, and there are more, there's the uh, Chattavimsamsha, the Aksha Vidamsha, and the Shashtiamsha. All these are important, but they're all based off of the birth chart, meaning we get them by knowing how the degrees in each sign relate to the particular Varga. So an astrologer who sat down and committed these things to memory, and it happens slowly over time, they'll be able to say, oh, you have this planet in this degree, therefore I know it's in this position within the Vamsha, within the Samsha, within the Drekana, because there are specific formulas that you can memorize that will tell you that. And that's why when it comes to the Vargas, oftentimes we think of them as separate charts. The only reason we think of them as separate charts is because it helps the human mind to draw them out, to, to write them out, so that we can think about them. Whereas, again, the more developed an astrologer becomes, they don't need these other divisional charts. They're able to just know a planet's here, in this degree, in this sign, therefore I know where it is, I know what Amsha it's in, and Navamsha, and so on. And this becomes very important in interpretation because each planet, we only have, what, nine planets? And we have all these things in the world, all these experiences, all these situations. Each planet has to represent um, something. Each planet has to represent everything. A combination of planets has to represent everything, because there's nine planets and all these diverse experiences and possibilities. So that's why when we consider the Vargas, each planet within that Varga will give us insight into a person's uh, nature. Meaning, how is Mars doing in the Desumption? All right. Well, is this person going to approach their career, their status, their activity in the world with the courage and initiative and skill that Mars has to give? Mars is in good dignity. Mars is in a good house. In the Desumption, it supports that. 
how is Venus doing in the Navamsha? Will a person find uh, fulfillment in the long-term committed relationships in marriage? You know plenty of people who they never seem to lock on any particular path. They can never find fulfillment. They can be on the clearest, easiest, best path ever. Yet if their Venus has some difficulty within the Navamsha, they're not going to recognize it. Okay, so the Vargas are very important uh, to get more detailed information about every specific area of life. And the Vargas are not separate from the birth chart. They are simply, if you can imagine it this way, as though you're shining a point of light in a particular degree in a sign. And when you shine that light on that particular degree, that particular point, it's like it becomes a prism and it, this color goes here into the Dasamsha. This color goes there into the Drakana. This color of that light goes into the Navamsha. So it's like light hitting a particular point of the horoscope. And by hitting that particular point, it determines how the energy of that planet is going to reflect or become, I guess, prismatically reflected. I'm not sure exactly what the right terminology is. Um, but through that point to the other areas of life. Okay, so this is why understanding the Vargas are so important. And it's also important to note that even though we have known about Vargas, really it's only been the Navamsha and Drekana um, that has been used uh, most often through time. Getting into the real fine, subtler Vargas and so on, that wasn't very common until maybe I'm going to just be conservative here and say the last 30 or 40 years or liberal. I guess I'd be liberal if I was saying that. And why is that? Because it's only recently that we've had computer programs that can accurately, accurately calculate these things. Um, talking to people who've had sessions uh, with astrologers in India, but let's say 50 years ago, they would get a drawing um, of the Navamsha along with their main birth chart. Uh, would they have the other Vargas there? No, not so much. Um, this came from you know, talking to people who've had their charts read in India, also discussing it um, with Ernst Wilhelm, who's created the Kala Vedic Astrology Software Program, uh, with relatives in India, and he's sort of their family astrologer. So he knows you know, what people are bringing uh, and what, they've been, what their other astrologers have been looking at. So we're in a bit of renaissance here, where exploring the Vargas, really getting into the Vargas, um, can unlock so much potential of our astrological understanding of a chart and principles in general. And with the Vargas, um, we have to remember they can also be used very well for transits. So one thing I like to do is pull up a person's birth chart and it'll have the birth chart and it'll have the Vargas. And then I like to pull up another chart of right now. And it'll have the chart for right now, like what's going on in the heavens right now. It'll also have the Vargas for right now. So if I see that Saturn is in um, Pisces right now, uh, in the Varga and the Navamsha, I see Saturn's in Pisces Navamsha. And I look at someone's chart and I see that their ascendant in the Navamsha is Pisces and the moon is in Pisces. I'm going to spend a lot more time discussing their experience with Saturn and the moon um, in relationship to their long-term relationships, their commitments, their sense of purpose, and so on. It takes a lot of work, but I found it to be extremely revealing about what a person is going through more specifically when it comes to transits. We've already discussed this quite a bit uh, earlier in this session, but also you use it for dashas. Um, let's just say, generally speaking, a person, you're looking at their Navamsha again. And they're having problems with their marriage. And they weren't having any problems with their marriage until about three months ago. And then you happen to see three months ago that they began running a dasha where there was a planet in the third house in the Navamsha and of a planet in the sixth house in the Navamsha. Of course that's going to speak to trial and difficulty. So even if you don't necessarily know how to read and pick apart the horoscope, or even the Vargas with um, extreme detail and accuracy, you would be a very helpful astrologer if that's all you knew how to do was to go through a person's dashas and to say, ah, during this period of time, 
uh, you will be running two planets that are in maybe the sixth and eighth house of the Navamsha. So you're going to plan to have some setbacks, some difficulties, some sudden breaks and changes within your marriage or your sense of purpose and direction in life. Or maybe you have to look at their Desumpsha, their D10. And maybe this is a performer. And publicity and these sorts of things are very important for them. Status is very important for someone who's in a profession like a performing art. And they come to you and they say, I want to release this new album, or I want to have this art exhibit. And they say, I'd like to do it during this time. And you look at the Desumption, you see that it just so happens during that time, um, all the planets that are running by Dasha, let's just say it's, uh, let's just say it's Mercury and Jupiter. Let's say that those two planets are running, and they're both within the twelfth house of the Desumption. And let's say they're not really in great dignity, and by Lajitavya Vashas, they're not really helping each other. And it's the twelfth house, which is more away from the world, not, not a public house at all. Then you would definitely say, well, during that four-month period of that particular combination of planets, I would not do it then, because you're not going to get the best results. But then you might see down the road, maybe six months to nine months later, that they end up running a dasha of two fantastic planets, or three fantastic planets related to the tenth house in the Desumption which is the house that's primary to the Desumption for status and prestige and being visible. And then you can say it's this particular cycle that you're going to be most supported in relationship to those plans uh, for greater publicity, uh, greater status, um, greater visibility within the world. So again, I mention this because just by having that little bit of information about what the Varga represents, like what area of life are we talking about, um, and knowing what houses would be supportive within that Varga for the thing the, person, the thing the person wants to do, that then you can give them information about this. this is a good time, this is not a good time. And even though you're not painting the whole picture, you're not defining exactly why, it doesn't matter. They know, lay low during this time, take advantage of this time. And that will help them guide their life. Okay, so... The Vargas are very important when it comes to dashas as well, or timing, not just with transits, but also with the planetary cycles that we know as dashas. So there's a whole lot you can go into with Vargas, and they are, they are like the part of the iceberg that's under the water. When we're looking at the horoscope, when we're looking at the birth chart, all we're looking at is the top of the iceberg. And that's fine, you can get a lot of excellent good information just by looking at the top of the iceberg. But if you also know how to look down under the water to see, all right, what's going on in the person's 10th house in the birth chart? How does that relate to the Desumptia? What's going on uh, in the person's 5th house, uh, dealing with children and procreation? Now let's take it down to the, the D7, the Septumptia, to see, is there support or confluence there? Or is there some static, some difficulty? So the more you know about the Vargas, the more you understand what they are and how they work, and that they're not at all separate from the main birth chart. They are a reflection through that main birth chart. Um, the greater capacity you will have to access uh, the karma indicated by a person's natal chart. So anyway, these are the things to think about in regards to the Vargas. Um, I do intend on doing a weekend webinar for this, uh, this October. I'll record it. Um, so even if you're in a different part of the world, which happens a lot, and you can't attend every session, you will be able to get the recording uh, after the fact. Um, we'll, we, will ex we will explore this in more detail. We will look at charts. We will talk about what do the plants mean in a particular Vargas. Um, how can we kind of start to see them in relationship to the timing of events with transits and so on? So it's going to be more of an introductory, but a very deep introduction. So it is advised, though, that if you are interested in participating in this, that you have background knowledge on what the signs mean, what the signs are about, what planets generally mean, um, and some background information on the Vargas. If you need more assistance on that, The Art and Science of Vedic Astrology, Volume 1, talks a bit about the Vargas to introduce them to you, how to create the Vargas. Um, the Art and Science of Vedic Astrology, Volume 2, has a whole chapter on Vargas, Chapter 6, where it talks about what is a Varga, how do we begin reading the Vargas, um, what are the general house indications for the Vargas, what are the planetary qualities 
within the Vargas, placements within Vargas and Varga descriptions and so on. Um, also, if you're seriously interested in learning how to comprehend the Vargas on a very profound level, um, at the beginning of next year, we will begin year one of the apprenticeship program again, where we start with the Rashi's and Science course. And in that course, we went through this in, in detail. Um, I even had them draw out and write out, learn what are the formulas for the Vargas. And the beautiful thing about that is that when you learn the formulas for the Vargas, and you don't rely on your computer program, but you actually learn the formula, you create the chart, and then you say, this planet's here, therefore it goes here in this Varga, and you draw it in. This planet's here, therefore it's here in this Varga. You do that for one Varga, you do that for four or five other Vargas, just by that simple act of doing that. It's almost as if the chart unlocks itself for you by learning how to do it and to draw it out. So not only is it just good technical knowledge to have, uh, but to do it is a very profound way uh, to gain insight into a chart in the moment, which is one of the reasons why some of you know it takes me a long time to read a person's chart. I can't just, or I don't, maybe I can, I don't know, I don't try it that much, but I don't just like to look at a chart and say, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen, this is gonna happen. What I do is I stop and I break down, I think through all the planetary positions for the Vargas, and by doing that, that allows me, based on the feedback I've gotten, uh, to give fairly good advice. Um, and all because of the patience it takes to learn how to use the Vargas. And astrology is not meant to be easy. You know, I, I hate to burst your bubble, those who like to have these kind of real quick snapshot techniques. They can be helpful to a degree, they can stimulate your intuition. But again, always think about what we're doing with astrology. Does it seem like that should be easy? Now, it may be that I'm a subpar astrologer and I just need to think things through and I'm slow and it takes me a long time. But what I've noticed is that when I work with other astrologers who also take their time, um, who realize it's not easy, who don't try to answer every single question a person has, um, they tend to give a little more consistent advice. Um, so I'd like to encourage you to start thinking in that way too. That way when you're looking at a chart, you also can be much more thoughtful and direct and um, not guesstimate things, which oftentimes happens. All right, so consider this about the Vargas. It's a fascinating topic. Uh, a lot can be gleaned from them, but the, the real thing I'm trying to share here is what the Vargas are. What are they about? That they're not separate charts, that it's, it's part of the whole iceberg, it's part of the whole entity. And that they give deeper confluence to what the birth chart says. And they allow you to have more accurate timing um, if there is going to be a difficulty coming up or if there's going to be a supportive period coming up. So they're very helpful. All right. So next video, I think I might spend some time talking about uh, not being superstitious with astrology.